Hi there. In nature, everything is harmonious, natural, and interconnected. What may seem cruel to us is only a struggle for existence. Animals have to develop an action strategy, adapt, and improvise. The main way of predator survival is hunting. Their mysterious look and graceful movements attract and fascinate. And hunting in the air is like an epic performance with two sets of actors. The hunters, which are carnivorous predators, and their victims, innocent, unsuspecting, helpless prey. The peregrine falcon never catches prey on the ground, and this is due to the fact that it cannot always catch up with fast birds, such as a wild pigeon or a black swift. The speed of their horizontal flight is the same, about 60 miles per hour, but the pigeon is much tougher than the peregrine and can fly at a top speed for a longer period of time. So, the peregrine has developed an interesting way of hunting. This master of hunting attacks from above, his main weapon is surprise. Peregrines have huge eyes, which notice the victim from six miles away. High above the ground, the peregrine launches a sneak attack. It immediately takes a position over the victim, folding its wings, rapidly rushing down almost vertically. Due to gravity in the free fall, the peregrine falcon has a vertical flight speed of over 200 miles per hour. In 2005, researchers determined an absolute record of 242 miles per hour. This is the highest speed reached amongst all the animals in the world, which makes the peregrine falcon the fastest animal on Earth. During freefall, the peregrine's eyes are protected by a special membrane, the so-called third eyelid. In addition, the bird does not suffocate from air pressure due to tubercles on the beak which prevent direct penetration of the air into the nostrils. Attacking from above, the peregrine falcon beats his prey on the fly with his claws. The blow is so strong that not only feathers fly off the prey, but the head can easily fly off too. On the American continent, you will find fishing bats living here. The most famous of them, the greater bulldog bat. It has large, strong paws with sharp claws, which is convenient to snatch a slippery fish out of the water. Living in the territory from Mexico to the northern part of Argentina, the greater bulldog bat feeds mainly on insects, but in the dry season, they begin to actively fish and sometimes even hunt crabs and shrimp. Like all bats, they orient themselves in space using echolocation, determining the shape and location of objects by reflecting the sound signal. They fly at night over the rivers and bays, carefully scanning the surface of the water. Since only a small part of the signals penetrate the water column, these bats catch fish reacting to ripples on the water surface that occurs when a fish swims near the surface. A barely noticeable wave of water or a dorsal fin protruding slightly from the water is enough for the greater bulldog bat to notice the presence of fish. The distance at which the object is detected and recognized with the help of ultrasound is on average 7 feet. The greater bulldog bat immediately dives, catches their prey with the sharp long claws of the hind legs, and lifts it into the air and quickly pulls it up to the mouth. They eat it on the fly or take it to a more peaceful place. Overnight, greater bulldog bats can easily detect and catch 20 to 30 fish. The northern gannet is the most massive seabird of the North Atlantic. They live on the coast, but their hunting grounds are in the open ocean. The natural elements of these birds are water and wind, and they easily move from one to another. Every single morning, the gannets go out to inspect the surface of the ocean. Binocular vision allows the birds to see objects in volume and accurately determine the location of prey. During the flight, they keep their head down looking for a large school of fish in the depths of the water. Noticing the prey, gannets dive from a height of 30 to 100 feet. As they start to attack, they fold their wings only halfway to be able to maneuver and then fold them completely before entering the water. Their speed at the surface of the water can reach 62 miles per hour, immersion depth of up to 80 feet. The blow against the water is softened by airbags located under the skin of the head in the forehead area and performing the function of airbags. Also, gannets breathe revealing the beak since the external nostril openings are permanently overgrown 
but this does not interfere with diving. Underwater, gannets are excellent swimmers, and they can stay there for up to 40 seconds. It is noteworthy that the bird captures the fish, not at the time of diving, but when it emerges. An air attack can continue until the school of fish hide at greater depths, or until the coming evening forces gannets to return to the coast for an overnight stay. There are creatures in nature that only in the dark of night begin their real active life. Owls are mysterious birds. Big eyes, hooked beaks, they are predators. Everything in them seems to be created specifically for hunting. They have powerful needle-sharp claws which pierce into its prey like the teeth of a trap. Owls have great, delicate hearing. Owls' ears are hidden under the feathers on the head. One ear is directed up and the other down to hear all rustling from above and below. When an owl listens from its hunting perch, it pulls back the feathers and skin covering the ears. The owl is always on alert. They will hear even the slightest squeak in movement. It hears a mouse rustling many feet away. For example, this mouse from a mink. The owl heard it and now is alert and prepared. Another movement of the mouse and the owl suddenly attacks from the air. It is the delicate hearing that allows the owl to hunt at night and allows it to stay with the prey. Where owls live, mice are never enough. The head of an owl can very quickly turn as much as 270 degrees, which is simply indispensable for hunting. Owls fly silently like a ghost. The owl has soft feathers on the wings. This allows them to fly almost silently, which helps a lot when hunting. Owls are also nimble as cats. They will not touch anything. They will fly around all obstacles and grab the prey so it does not hear or understand anything. And when it does, it will be too late. Red, sly, fast, and deft. This is how you would characterize the fox, and they are also able to attack prey from the air. This is how it happens. The fox is a great hunter. In addition to observation and ingenuity, they have an excellent visual memory, a good sense of smell, incredibly sharp hearing, and an excellent reaction time. How the fox hunt mice, especially in the winter, is really worth watching. The amazing ability to hear prey from 300 feet away and a keen sense of smell help the fox hunt down small rodents under a thick layer of snow. The fox's ears are like locators. They are able to catch any sound vibrations produced by the prey, even if the latter is under a half meter layer of snow. Most often for catching mice, the fox chooses late evening or very early morning. The fox can go out in search of food during the day, but only if the situation around is calm and nothing foreshadows danger. Mice live all winter under snow, and the predators hunt them. Getting to the mice is not easy. Foxes have a very interesting way to catch prey under the snow. Here is a dazzling white field, in the middle of it, a bright red beast. Running a little, the fox stops, listens, looks around, and thinks about further actions. Suddenly, it was alerted. The mouse is detected. Preparing for a decisive jump, the fox rises on its hind legs. Having chosen the perfect moment, the fox jumps in the air, dives upside down, bearing into the snow and leaving only the tail on the surface, and after a moment, emerges with a mouse in its teeth. This animal is like a horror movie character. The Great False Vampire Bat or Spectral Bat. One of the largest bats in the world. Its living area stretches from Brazil and Peru to southern Mexico. These are the largest predatory bats. The bite of their long fangs is very painful. These giant bats do not hunt beetles or moths. They eat meat. They don't suck blood. They absorb rodents, bats, small birds, and lizards. On the hunt, the false vampires go out at dusk and at night. They usually fly at low altitudes. Their flight is not particularly fast, but very maneuverable. First, they look out for their target, and then they attack. 
They land on top with their wings spread halfway, clamp the prey with their claws, and bite through the nape of the victim. That's all for today. Put like if you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.